the realm. Do you know what the realm is? It's the thousand blades of Aegon's enemies. A story we agree to tell each other over and over till we forget that it's a lie. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back for another Game of Thrones Season 8 Theory video. Today I want to do something slightly different than what I typically do in my videos. Lately, I have noticed one theory in particular seems to be gaining some steam, so I wanted to take the time today to address it by giving my own opinion on the subject. Over the last few weeks, I have been getting several emails, tweets, and comments basically asking me the same thing, which is, do I think Jon Snow will become the new Night King? This idea is becoming more and more popular as we get closer to the final season, so I did a little searching on Google last night to try to find the source of the theory. The first thing I noticed was there were a bunch of different articles already written about the theory, and after looking at those, it eventually led me to a source, and I did link the source down in the description of the video. Now, I do want to say, I highly doubt this was the first person to come up with this idea, but the articles I saw did use this as their source, so I figured I would do the same thing because I do like to give credit when I can. Now, what I want to do first is read the theory about Jon Snow becoming the new Night King, then I will give my own opinion, that way I can just respond to all those questions at once, because I know many of you have been asking the same question. So, let's jump into the Jon Snow and Night King theory. The person who wrote this version of the theory said, Hello, this is my first time typing something like this, and English is not my native language. I also want to add, I've not read any of the books, and I'm not as deep into the history and lore, so don't be too harsh on me. I'm sure someone else already came up with this idea, but among the many theories about the Night King and everything regarding him, this is the one that seems believable. So me and a friend were discussing Episode 7 of Game of Thrones, and after quite some time of talking absolute nonsense and fabricating unrealistic scenarios, it turned into something we could both believe in. I'd love to hear responses and even arguments, I'm sure they're out there, that will completely destroy the theory. My friend called it the Davy Jones Theory, as it is similar to the plot twist in Pirates of the Caribbean. Will Turner has to take the role of Davy Jones, because the Flying Dutchman always has to have a captain. The idea is, and as the prophecy foretells it, that Azor Ahai will save the realm from the Night King. What we talked about was the idea that the Night King is actually immortal, there is no method to kill him for good, and even the Children of the Forest can't control or kill him. The only way to beat him is that, this is just one possible way it might happen, someone has to pull out the dragon glass that is in his chest that created him in the first place. By doing this, the Night King would die, but unlike what happens when someone kills a White Walker, none of the creatures the Night King created or turned would die. Instead, they would lose the mind-controlling effect the Night King has on them, and they would start doing whatever they want, i.e. rampaging around Westeros. To prevent this scenario from happening, someone has to take the place of the Night King by stabbing himself with the previously extracted Dragonglass Dagger. By doing this, the person, in our mind Jon Snow, would sacrifice himself for the greater good, gaining control over all the Whites and White Walkers. He would then lead them back past the Wall, into the North where they would stay, like it has been before since the last long night. Here we had two ideas on the details, and we couldn't agree on one, so I'm going to mention both. After becoming the new Night King, they kill off all the White Walkers and Whites, but they still can't kill the Night King. He would then seclude himself in the North as to not hurt anyone else. The White Walkers and Whites are still there, and he leads them in the North so he can watch over them. So, how would this tie in together with the previous Azor Ahai mentioned in the tales? Well, in our mind, the same scenario we have now in the series has happened before, which is known as the Long Night. At that time, the Children of the Forest and the First Men united, and they were able to extract the Dragonglass Dagger as mentioned above. Azor Ahai then sacrificed himself by stabbing himself with a dagger to gain control. After he became the new Night King, he was still conscious about himself. He still had his personality and memories. So he, the Children of the Forest, and the First Men built the Wall in Union, the Night King using ice and maybe even using the undead as help and the children would use their magic to add protection to the wall. And the first men would build castles along the wall, and they would form the Night's Watch. After that, the Night King would seclude himself far in the north where no one else could survive. Now over time, since the Long Night, the personality of the former Azor Ahai slowly began to decay, and he finally turned into what we now see in the series as the Night King. At some point, the vanishing personality of Azor Ahai could no longer hold the evil in check, 
that was lingering inside him. At that point, the Night King started moving again, returning from the far north and slowly started creating new White Walkers and Whites as he had before, thus creating a never-ending, ever-repeating cycle of someone becoming the Night King. So to basically sum up this theory, they are saying the Night King cannot be killed, he can only be replaced. What he thinks will happen is, Jon Snow will become the new Night King, then banish himself to the north, in order to keep the people of Westeros safe. But over time, he will start to lose his personality, which will eventually lead to him becoming the evil version of the Night King. Alright, now before I give my opinion on the theory, I want to make sure we're all on the same page. If you think Jon Snow will become the new Night King for a different reason, make sure you put it down below, because I'm not sure if everyone is basing their question off this exact version of the theory. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I know many of you have either been asking me this question or just telling me you think Jon Snow will become the next Night King, but I haven't seen a ton of good evidence for the theory yet. So, if you do believe in the theory, make sure you provide some evidence to back it up. There may be different versions of the theory that led you to believe it, but the reason why I chose to read this version was because when I searched for it on Google, the top articles were based on this one. So if you have different reasons for believing it, just make sure you let me know. In my opinion, whoever made this theory left out one of the best pieces of evidence from the show. When Jon Snow went into the caves on Dragonstone, he discovered some very old paintings of the White Walkers and the Night King. If you look at the paintings, you can see that it looks completely different from the Night King we see today. So it does appear there may have been different Night Kings over the years, and this actually supports the theory because maybe the Night King does always have to be replaced. This could also be true for the books as well. When the author, George R. R. Martin, commented on the Night's King, he said this, As for the Night's King, the form I prefer, in the books he is a legendary figure, akin to Lan the Clever and Brandon the Builder, and no more likely to have survived to the present day than they have. This could support the idea that there have been multiple Night Kings over time. If you are up to date with the books, then you know the Night King has not been revealed yet. There are Whites and White Walkers, but we haven't seen who is leading them. The only time we hear about the Night's King is when someone is referring to the legend of the 13th Lord Commander. And he was alive roughly 8,000 years ago. But most people do assume someone is controlling the Whites and the White Walkers today. So even in the books, there may have been more than one Night's King. If that is true, then there is a chance someone might have to replace the Night King we see today. Maybe that's why the Night King has been taking Craster's sons. He might be looking for someone to take his place one day, but that's just a guess. Another piece of evidence that may support this theory is the fact that the Army of the Dead was not completely defeated during the first Long Night. When they came during the Long Night, no one was able to destroy them entirely. In the World of Ice and Fire book, it says, How the Long Night came to an end is a matter of legend. In the North, they talk about the last hero who sought out the Children of the Forest. Thanks to the Children, the first men of the Night's Watch banded together, and they were able to fight and win the Battle for the Dawn, the last battle that broke the Endless Winter and sent the others fleeing to the Icy North. It does not say the White Walkers and the Army of the Dead were completely destroyed. It says they sent them running to the North. So you gotta be asking yourself, can the Night King and his army be defeated for good? Because if you can defeat them for good, then why didn't they do this the first time? Why build a giant wall and create a Night's Watch? Unless that's the only way to try and contain them. Is it possible that the Children of the Forest created a weapon so dangerous that it can never be defeated? I suppose anything is possible. However, Jon Snow has one thing on his side that the Children of the Forest and the Last Hero did not have during the Long Night. Jon has aligned himself with Daenerys Targaryen, who happens to have fire-breathing dragons, arguably the most powerful and magical weapon in the realm, other than maybe the Night King. But I guess that's why this is a Song of Ice and Fire. However, it still looks like the Night King has the upper hand, because the dragons weren't able to affect him personally, but he was able to kill a dragon and gain control of it. When it comes to the TV show, I think they will come up with a solution to defeat the Night King for good. Now, I am just basing this on my own personal opinion, but I don't see them ending it the same way they did thousands of years ago, when the others fled back to the Icy North. When it comes to defeating the Night King, Jon Snow does seem very determined. I will say this though, if someone were going to take the Night King's place, and it wasn't Gilly's baby, I would like to think it would be a member from House Stark, because of their connection to the others. 
After all, the first Night's King was a Stark, according to Old Nan. I don't think it's too crazy to think another Stark could become the leader of the others. Basically, everything about the Starks has some sort of connection or parallel to the White Walkers, which I have went over numerous times in other videos, so I won't repeat all that information again. But this is an interesting idea. If I had to pick which Stark would become the next Night King, I would actually go with Bran Stark instead of Jon. Now, I know there is already a very popular idea that Bran Stark has been the Night King the whole time, but that's not what I'm saying here. I'm referring to someone taking his place in the future, as in next season. Here is something that might be worth considering. Maybe this is why the Children of the Forest recruited Bran in the first place. If the Children of the Forest did create the first Night King and lost control of him, maybe they are thinking this. If we can find another very special person with Stark's blood, the blood of the First Men, then maybe we can have a chance of getting control over this dangerous weapon we created. This could be why the Children of the Forest and the Three-Eyed Raven started to train Bran at a very young age. They might know they created a weapon that can never be defeated, only replaced with a new leader. But if they could train someone from a very young age to do as they say, which they already do basically have mind control over Bran at this point, then it could actually work. They might see this as a way of containing this deadly outbreak. Even though we saw the children die at the cave, that doesn't mean they're all gone, because you never know how many are still at the God's Eye where the main Werewood system is located. What if they set a trap for Bran Stark, and that's why he entered the same vision as the Night King? Did they secretly hope the Night King would reach out and grab Bran, as to mark the next person in line? It was kinda weird that the Night King was just sitting there, almost as if he was waiting for this to happen. Not to mention, Old Nan did say the name of the Night's King was Brandon Stark, and she also said him and Bran Stark slept in the very same room. Maybe Old Nan's stories actually do predict the future. You see, this whole time, many people thought Bran Stark would go into the past, and inadvertently become the Night King. But what if that's not how it happens? What if he volunteers, or if he's tricked into doing this in the future? If he thinks this is the only way to save the realm, then he might consider doing something like this. It could make for one screwed up ending. Imagine if a Stark did have to sacrifice themselves to an eternity of what would be equivalent of a frozen hell beyond the wall. Not only would we lose another Stark, but the show would also end with Westeros never really getting to live in peace, because there would always be that threat looming beyond the wall, knowing that one day things could get out of control all over again. I'm gonna end the video by saying this. I don't believe it will end this way, but I can't sit here and say it's impossible either, just because I have a different ending in mind. What do all of you think? Do you agree with the theory that Jon Snow will become the next Night King? Or do you think Bran Stark makes more sense? Let me know your thoughts and questions on all of this down below in the comment section. Anyways, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching the video and supporting my channel. I really appreciate that, and I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you again very soon. Bye.